So welcome to our short video demonstration on how to clean up a dead out hive. We notice a hive is dead, I want to clean it so we can use it later on as well. So the purpose for this is to clean off things like dead bees, burr comb, propolis, other things that have accumulated in the hive, whether it's mold or whether it's nosema, whoever it is, we're going to do a quick inspection. I'm going to show you how to clean them off and prepare them for fumigation. So let's take a look inside this hive. Take the uh, outer cover off. Uh, in this case, I'm going to pry off the inner cover, and I will clean this off as well. It's got some junk in here. Um, it's got some built-up uh, burrs here as well. I'll clean that off at a, at a later date. What I like to do is, if I'm outside, I like to use a wheelbarrow so that for biosecurity purposes, I'm not leaving all this garbage and, and crap around in my yard. So I like to put it in the wheelbarrow where I can dispose of it. If I'm inside, I like to use a small box like I've got over here. So I'm going to just uh, really carefully take a look at this one. What I want to do is I want to clean off everything here that is making a mess. I want the hive to be nice. and I'm going to prepare it for, for use later on. So I'm just going to take a look in here and see what I've got. So I've got a frame of honey. I'm looking for a number of things on, on this dead out. What kind of resources can I use? Well, this is honey. I'm going to be able to use this again, but I do want to clean up any, any stuff that's here. So I'll take it over to another location, in this case, either wheelbarrow or box, and I'll scrape off all this stuff. Uh, I'll get off anything that's, that's in the way, take off any burr comb, anything like that. If there's any dead bees or anything that I need to clean off, I'll clean that off my frame as as well. Depending on how bad it is, I either use the edge of my tool or I use the, the 90 degree angle on that. I try to be careful when I'm cleaning my boxes off, I like to draw my tool towards me uh, in this, this method. One, because if you scrape this way, you can dig up and get wooden slivers and basically carve your box up. So I've gone through this frame, I've taken off everything that I thought was, uh, was not good. I have a nice frame, I'm going to be able to use it. So I'll put it in a separate box where I'm going to be able to use that resource. And as I go through, I look... And I'm looking at this frame thinking, wow, this one's got some very, very dark comb in here. There's big holes in it. The bees can clean it off, but I've got some wires that are loose. Uh, I've got some mouse poop here as well. And I'm thinking that maybe a little tiny bit of honey, but I think I will probably not use this frame anymore or because it's so close to being okay I may just want to fumigate it. So I'll put it in a box. So as I go through these frames I'm looking for the for the condition of them. Is there anything I can't save or anything I can save? So I'm looking at a frame here that's very dark. It's been obviously around for a few years. Um, even though it's got honey in it that can probably be used, I would probably not keep this frame because it's got some, some broken parts to it and it's definitely old. So I'll either get rid of this, burn it, recycle it, do something with it as well. I'm not going to feel like it yet. So what I've done is I'm going through this. We're going to go through the rest of these, clean them up, put them in a box, and I'll show you how we're going to fumigate. This is a perfect time for me to inspect all these as well and see what's happened in this hive. I'm looking for specifically fowl brood, I'm looking for nosema, I'm looking for something that may have caused this, this dead out. Okay? And depending on what I see will determine how we're going to treat for this. So that is what we're trying to do. We're trying to clean these up right now because anything that's left in a hive can infect your bees when the spring comes. There's going to be spores, there's going to be lots of things that can, can affect them when, when you go back to use them. So I want to clean them, I want to fumigate them, and then I want to be able to use them again. So come back and join me in a few minutes and we'll look at the process for using acetic acid safely to fumigate our boards. So welcome back to the continuation of our video of fumigating and sanitizing our equipment. The bees are starting to fly, we're starting to clean out our dead dead out equipment, we want to prepare it for use in the spring. So we've taken our frames, we've cleaned out our frames, we've decided which ones can be used, which ones have resources. So I'm looking for 
uh, drawn out foundation, I'm looking for honey, I'm looking for old brood frames, what condition they're in. So I've taken them, I've scraped them down as we saw before, I put them in my boxes and I've stacked my boxes over here. So when I am cleaning out a box, what I want to have happen is my frames in the spring to fit nicely in here. So this is where I'll use my hive tool and I will scrape and clean up all this stuff that's in it. Um, I've got lots of, of little bits of things. I have lots of propolis in here, so I'll save this propolis that we see down here. I'll clean this box up, I'll save the stuff that I want. And in this case, I've got a nice chunk of propolis here that I will, I will save. i got more propolis in here, but I'll scrape it down. I like to use this side of my hive tool, and I like to scrape it out. I like to get in here as well, and I'll scrape all this into another container just so it doesn't contaminate my uh, my apiary. Once it's clean and I'm, I'm done with that, there's a couple things I can do. I can uh, take a torch as well, and this works for any, any of this equipment, and I can fire up my torch and I can just lightly torch around some of the joints, some of the seams, some of those areas where uh, spores or uh, eggs could have been laid, could be hiding. I am going to fumigate this whole thing anyway, so I take my box and I put it back on top of this stack, okay? And the last thing I do in preparation is I check out my bottom board. So in this case, I'm looking at all these dead bees. I'm doing a quick little autopsy of what happened in this hive. So I will see a bunch of mold over here on these bees. Um, I'm looking for anything else that may be in here. It's not a screen bottom board, so I won't be able to tell if there's any mites or what happened. But I'll want to clean this off. And again, I do it in my container that I'm going to dispose of, of these. I'll clean up you know, anything that's on the bottom of this. And I will also lightly torch this once I finish cleaning it all off. Sometimes a wide bladed scraper works a little better than the hive tool. But regardless, whatever you use, whatever condition, your bottom board is, you want it clean so you're going to be able to use it. So once I've done that, I've cleaned this all off, I've scraped it down, and I'm ready to, uh, to use it again in the spring. So we'll just leave that over there. So we're going to look at this, this hive and see how we can fumigate it. I'm going to use acetic acid. You've got to be really, really careful with this, this stuff. This is a 500 milliliter bottle, that's how much we need to, to treat and to fumigate this hive. So we'll come back to that in a moment. I'm going to show you some of the protective equipment we need. Because it's an acid, very corrosive, you don't want to breathe it, you don't want to get it on exposed flesh, you basically want to get yourself suited up for it. So I don't like to have any exposed, any exposed uh, a flesh anywhere, so I'll roll sleeves down, I'll um, cover everything up that I can. And in this case, I'm going to, because I don't have it here with me, I like to use a rubber apron. So we're going to pretend that this cloth apron is a rubber apron. So I want it on. I just want it to prevent any splashback that we may have. I don't want it on my clothes either. Respirator is essential. You want to have either a full face mask, such as this one, with cartridges. This will go right over your face. I don't need this part. And when you've got a full face respirator on, it protects you. Can't talk very well. But that is a full face respirator. You don't want to use a full face one. You just want to protect the rest of your, your face. You can use a, a partial. In this case, it should, covers the bottom half of my face. I would also want to use a pair of goggles because I do not want splashback happening as well while I'm doing this. So I'm just going to take it off so you can, you can hear me. I have had people who like to use a plastic shield as well. It's a little bit overkill, but it, you're not going to get splashback that way. Gloves are also essential. You're going to want a pair of, in this case, these are neoprene gloves. I always roll my cuffs up a little bit because the same thing can happen. If I happen to spill acid, I don't want it running down inside my glove onto my hand. So this will just help to catch it. I'm holding it up like this and it runs down. I'll catch it. So neoprene gloves. And, and I'm ready. 
respirator, fuller half, goggles as well. So what you want to do with your acid, you can do it either inside or outside. I'll talk to you both of these, um, these scenarios. So let's assume that we're doing this inside. You want your temperature in your room to be a steady well, 30 degrees, somewhere between 20 and 30 degrees for at least a week to 10 days. You don't want to apply heat directly to your boxes because you don't want to melt whatever's in here, uh, your plastic, wax, anything else, but keep the room at a 30 degree uh, temperature. And you want to have it that way for at least a week. So I've got an empty box on here. I've got my, my brood frames here. I've got my empty box here. And I'm going to apply acetic acid. Very important, read the material safety data sheets. Very important. This is corrosive. It can be very scary stuff. Know the product you're using. So read your MS sheets and be prepared to use it in the uh, in that manner. Now there's a couple ways of doing it. Um, one, there is a, a a vaporizer that can go in here. It's basically got a screen in it. You apply your acid in it and leave it in your hive. In this case, I'm going to use a, a pie plate, glass or, or tin. I just need to know that it's going to be able to hold 500 mils. I'm going to take my 500 mil jar of acetic acid and I'm going to pour it in here into this pie plate. So. 85% is ideal, 92% is good, it's just a little bit heavier, a little more concentrate, it'll take a little more to evaporate. So it's important to have an empty box on here as well because you're going to be putting it on top of your frames and letting it evaporate and sort of seep down through your box. So I would take my acid, I would pour it into my container, dispose of that in a, in a safe way, then I'd put my lids on top. Now, if you're outside, you want to seal up everything. You want to keep it outside of a windy area. You don't want it to be splashing or blowing back. You want the vapors concentrating in here. You can seal this up in a number of ways. One, you can use a plastic shrimp rack and you can wrap all these corners. You can use tape. Uh, tape up any holes or any gaps that you see on your hive as well. You don't want the vapors escaping out. You want to have a sealed and closed bottom as well. And then your top too. So once you've closed it and wrapped it, you've got the acid in there, you're going to leave this for 10 days, let the vapors seep through it, and then you're just going to air it out. At that point you know that your spore has been taken care of. Again it's important to know that this will not take care of American fowl brood spores. But this will clean up any uh, nosema. If you have a problem with nosema, this will clear up uh, your hives. Your bees are not going to be able to track in those same uh, digestive problems into your new hives in the spring. So keep it warm. Seal up the cracks. Put your acid in. Cover it up. Leave it for 10 days. Be very careful you do not get it on you. I like to keep a bucket of water handy as well. Just in case anything splashes, I can wash it off right away. Know what you need for first aid as well. Our preparation is very important. If you do it right, it'll be very effective. If you do it wrong, the consequences may not be quite so, quite so nice. So what we've done is we've cleaned up our material, we've cleaned up our frames, we know what we're using next year. I am fumigating this with my acid and it'll be safe to use again in the spring. So I hope that's helped a little bit. Uh, we encourage you to join us for our other videos. We'll do a little more in-depth and we'll actually apply acetic acid to some of our boxes once the weather gets a little bit better. So thank you for uh, coming and joining us and we hope to see you again soon.